Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the Aaron Advantage. We're changing up things a little bit with our video content strategy moving forward and doing a little bit more with the podcast, so you might see more of these videos with me in the studio doing some recording like this. Uh, today I wanted to touch on a topic that I think is really important for people who are out there looking to purchase a home. Uh, this is some great information that was provided by the company that I do my business coaching with, uh, Buffini & Company out of San Diego, California. And this document is the 10 deadly mistakes that buyers make when they're purchasing a home. I wanted to go through those 10 mistakes and kind of talk you out of how to uh, avoid those pitfalls if you're looking at making a purchase. The first thing is choosing a real estate agent who is not committed to forming a strong business relationship with you. Ultimately, what you need to realize is that you need to make a connection with somebody who cares about your interests, somebody who's dedicated to the profession, and not just somebody that answers a cold call or a Zillow lead or something else. Not to say that those are bad people. That's not my intention. What I'm trying to say is you want to make sure that you've got somebody who is dedicated to the real estate profession because there's a lot of things that you need to know and there's a lot of skills that are involved with helping you actually purchase a home. So finding the right person is absolutely imperative. Number two is making an offer on a home without being pre-qualified. That's a big mistake that the agent is making as well. When I'm working with a buyer, the number one thing that we talk about before we ever set foot inside a single house is making sure that the financing is in order. That's not just to my benefit as a real estate agent, but it's to the benefit of the buyer because if you don't actually know what you can afford or what you're able to purchase and you're trying to go out and look for properties and make offers, first off, we're in a highly competitive market. If you don't have a pre-approval or a pre-qualification in hand, you're probably not going to get your offer accepted. Secondly, if you are not pre-qualified, you may not actually be able to purchase the home if you even get an accepted offer. You're setting yourself up for heartache if you don't have a pre-qualification in hand on the front end, so make sure you get that taken care of up front before looking at any properties. Number three is not knowing the total costs involved. You need to make sure that you talk to your real estate agent and your lender early in the process to make sure you actually know all of the costs. There's financing costs that are involved, which is obviously going to be how much down payment you have to put down, your origination charges, title charges, appraisals, credit reports, inspections, all kinds of other things that need to go into that. Second off, you're going to have some additional costs for the real estate side of things, which is going to be like your home inspection, uh, not necessarily the lending inspections for certain types of loans, uh, but your actual whole house inspection, where you're going to get somebody out there to take a look at the components of the home and make sure that everything is working the way that it needs to be. Uh, you're also probably going to have a costs of potentially other things, like if you're looking at a property that needs a survey. You may need to have the property surveyed. That could be a buyer cost, seller cost, or something that could be negotiated. There's going to be things that you may not think of on the front end that you absolutely need to take into consideration. And you also need to know the costs of the utilities and other things of the property you're purchasing to make sure that you're actually getting into something that you can afford, not just something that you are qualified to purchase. Number four is limiting your search to open houses, ads, or the internet. Honestly, you shouldn't be limiting your search in any kind of way, especially with the limited inventory market that we're in right now. You should be doing everything you can to look as many places as possible. You should have your agent getting you set up with an automated search that's giving you everything that might match your criteria that is coming to you as soon as new listings hit the market. I tell everybody all the time, you need to tell me what you absolutely can't live without, and those are going to be the basic bare bones parameters that I'm going to use to make sure I'm getting you as much information as I possibly can. If we set this up to get everything you want in a house, with the way the market's moving right now, we're probably not going to be able to find everything you want, which means you might miss out on properties that with a little tweak could work for you. So we need to cast as wide a net as possible to make sure we're giving you every option available. Number five is thinking that there is only one perfect home out there. Man, I tell you what. If I had a dollar for every time I heard from clients that they're looking for their forever home, I would be a rich man and I wouldn't need to sell real estate anymore. The truth is there's no such thing as a perfect home out there. There's probably plenty of homes that could be perfect for you with a little bit of work, but trying to limit yourself to that one home that checks every box and makes sure that every need is met 
is probably not going to be super easy to do. Have an open mind, especially when we're in a tight market with limited inventory on the things that you want to have in a home. We can get you everything you need as far as bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, and everything that's a requirement. But if you open it up a little bit and find some homes that have a little bit of flex room on them, we'll probably get you into something a little bit quicker. Number six is not considering your long-term needs. This is definitely something that you need to take into consideration when you're making any large investment or purchase or anything else, which is, hey, where am I going to be in five years from now? You know, if this home is probably only going to work for you for a year or two because you're limiting yourself on space or you're not taking into consideration that maybe you'll get married in the future or maybe if you're recently married, you may have children or there's all kinds of other things that may come into play you're probably setting yourself up for failure on one of several fronts. Always make sure you're thinking and forecasting long-term before you purchase any property. There's nothing that hurts me more that, than having a buyer call me a year or two after they purchased a property because they're in a position that they have to sell it and they need to move and they just don't have the equity position that is going to be as beneficial to them as it could be if they would waited a longer period of time. Now, the good news is, is over the past couple of years, the market has increased in our area pretty well. So that's helped most of the people at least be able to break even or get back out of the home. But sometimes some people will actually lose money because they didn't think far enough ahead before purchasing a property. Number seven is not following through on due diligence. Honestly, if you're not doing this, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Ask questions of your real estate agent. I've had buyers several times say, hey, you know, I feel bad asking this, or I'm not sure if I should ask this question. Anytime I hear those, I automatically chime in and say, look, if you are thinking you need to ask the question, the answer is you do. There's no problem asking questions. As a matter of fact, I'd rather you ask questions and do your due diligence and figure out everything you need to know about the property before we put you under contract or before we close on the property. So make sure you're doing everything at every turn that you can to make sure that you're asking all the questions and getting them answered to your satisfaction before you buy a home. Number eight is not having a home inspection. I mean, this one's pretty self-explanatory. I don't care if it's brand new construction. I don't care if it was recently purchased. Home inspectors are human. They are inspecting the condition of the property based on the day and the time that they are there. And you know what? Sometimes they make mistakes. They don't do it intentionally. They're not intentionally trying to miss things, but they do on occasion. And not only that, the day that they're there, even if it was two, three months ago, things can happen. Properties change. You never know if something has come undone. You never know if maybe for some reason there's been water in the crawl space that could cause issues. Having a home inspection is something that I always recommend to every buyer. It's not a requirement. It's definitely not something you have to do, but it's well worth the money that you're going to spend to get that taken care of. Number nine is not examining insurance issues. Um, this is definitely something that catches a lot of people off guard because when they're looking at what they're pre-approved for or pre-qualified for or what they can afford, they're only looking at a house payment. They're not taking a look at other things that could affect the insurability of the property, A, or B, what that might cost to insure the property. Make sure you're actually taking a look at everything that may affect the insurability, whether there's reclaimed mine ground and you need subsidence insurance, if you're near a special uh, hazard flood area and you want flood insurance, if you're just making sure that you have the adequate coverage for having your pool and everything else. Ask those questions on the front end. Don't underinsure yourself and make sure that you're asking your agent to do all of the right things before you buy. Number 10 is not purchasing a home protection plan or a home warranty program. Now, this one is not necessarily a huge mistake that you you are making if you don't do this, but it's not a bad idea. Even if the seller's not offering a home warranty on the property, you can purchase one as a buyer. It's something that gives you a little bit of extra protection and a little bit of extra coverage on your home that you're buying for the first year that you're there covering some major components and appliances to make sure that if something would happen, you may have the ability to get that taken care of before uh, or with assistance from that warranty company as opposed to paying everything out of pocket. So take a look at everything. If you've got brand new appliances or you know the home's completely brand new construction, you may not necessarily need one, but don't think just because the seller's not offering it that you shouldn't ask for it. 
Hey, thanks again for checking out the Aaron Advantage. I hope you find this information useful. If you know anybody who's thinking about buying a home, please share this with them so they don't make these 10 pitfalls that could lead to problems when they're buying a home.